hi there um, I'm going to continue reading a bit more of Flat Stanley okay and this chapter is called Stanley the Kite can you look there can you see there's Flat Stanley and there's his brother he looks like dad is carrying Flat Stanley he should be doing some good exercise some good walking so Mr. Lambchop had always liked to take the boys off with him on Sunday afternoons to a museum or roller skating in the park, but it was very difficult when they were crossing streets or moving about in crowds. Stanley and Arthur would often be jostled from side to side and Mr. Lambchop worried about speeding taxis or that hurrying people might accidentally knock them down. Look, there he is, off to a museum. It was easier after Stanley got flat. Mr. Lambchop discovered that he could roll Stanley up without hurting him at all. He would tie up a piece of string around Stanley to keep him from unrolling and make a little loop in the string for himself. It was as simple as carrying a parcel and he could hold on to Arthur with the other hand. Look, there he is with the string. Easy peasy. Stanley did not mind being carried because he had never much liked to walk and Arthur didn't like walking either but he had to. It made him mad. One Sunday afternoon in the street they met an old college friend of Mr Lambchop's, a man he had not seen for years. Well George, I see you've bought some wallpaper, the man said. Going to decorate your house I suppose. Wallpaper? said Mr Lambchop. Oh no, this, this is my son Stanley. He undid the string and Stanley unrolled. How do you do? Stanley said. Nice to meet you, young fella, the man said. He said to Mr. Lambchop, George, that boy is flat. Smart too, Mr. Lambchop said. Stanley is third from the top in his class at school, <sighs> said Arthur. This is my younger son, Arthur, Mr. Lambchop said, and he will apologise for his rudeness. Arthur could only blush and apologise. Mr. Lambchop rolled Stanley up again and they set out for home. It rained quite hard while they were on their way. Stanley, of course, hardly got wet at all, just around the edges, but Arthur got soaked. Late that night, Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop heard a noise out in the living room. They found Arthur lying on the floor near the bookcase. He had piled a great many volumes of the Encyclopedia Britannica on top of himself. Put some more on me, Arthur said when he saw them. Don't just stand there, help me. Mr and Mrs Lanchop sent him back to bed. Oh, look at him. Why do you think he's putting those books on top of himself? I think he wants to be like Flat Stanley. <clears throat> but Flat Stanley is one of a kind. <clears throat> The next morning they spoke to Stanley. Arthur can't help being jealous, they said. Be nice to him. You're his big brother after all. Stanley and Arthur were in the park. The day was sunny but windy too and many older boys were flying beautiful enormous kites with long tails made in all the colours of the rainbow. Arthur sighed. Someday, he said, I will have a big kite and I will win a kite flying contest and be famous like everyone else. Nobody knows who I am these days. Stanley remembered what his parents had said. He went to a boy whose kite was broken and borrowed a large spool of string. You can fly me Arthur said, he, said Stanley. Come on. He attached the string to himself and gave Arthur the spool to hold. He ran lightly across the grass sideways to get up speed and they turned to meet the breeze up 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 went Stanley being a kite he knew just how to manage on the gusts of wind he faced full into the wind if he wanted to rise and let it take him from behind when he wanted speed he had only to turn his thin edge to the wind carefully a little at a time so that it did not hold him and then he would sit gracefully down towards the earth again. Arthur let out all the string and Stanley soared high behind, behind the trees. A beautiful sight. 
in his pale sweater and bright brown trousers against the pale blue sky. Everyone in the park stood still to watch. Stanley swooped right and then left in long matched swoops. He held his arms from side to side and zoomed across the ground like a rocket and curved up again towards the sun. <gasps> wow, look, Stanley is a kite. And there's Arthur and Daz. Oh, Mum. He side slipped and circled and made figure eights and crosses like a star. Nobody has ever flown the way Stanley Lambchop flew that day. Probably no one ever will again. After a while, of course, people grew tired of watching and Arthur got tired of running about with the empty spool. Stanley went right on though, showing off. Three boys came up to Arthur and invited him to join them for a hot dog and some soda pop. Arthur left the spool wedged in the fork of a tree. He did not notice while he was eating his hot dog that the wind was blowing the string and tangling it about the tree. Uh-oh, poor Stanley. The string got shorter and shorter, but Stanley did not realise how low he was until leaves brushed his feet and then it was too late. He got stuck in the branches. Fifteen minutes passed before Arthur and the other boys heard his cries and climbed up to set him free. Stanley would not speak to his brother that evening and at bedtime, even though Arthur had apologised, he was still cross. He was in the red zone. Alone with Mrs. Mr. Lambchop in the living room, Mrs. Lambchop sighed and shook her head. You're at the office all day having fun, she said. You don't realise what I go through with the boys. They're very difficult. Kids are like that, Mr. Lambchop said. Phases. Here we go. Oh, look at poor Stanley. He's caught up on the tree and he's got no one to help him. Oh, but it's okay because they came to the rescue. And that is the end of Stanley the Kite. I hope you enjoyed it.